I've got two words that I think are gonna make your day. Pelham Electronics. Or leverage buyout. You can take your pick. Oh, by the way, they finished uh, shampooing your carpets in your office. Hey, Alex. Uh, yes, thank you. Now, look, I think we can buy this company for a song. Uh, I brought along Just some material. Just put it down. I'll look them over later. Can, can you make that out? Um, 31 Rue de Fleur. What? What? What is all this? An international phone directory. What, are you looking for someone? This report says he may have just been spotted in Paris. These are talent listings. What, what is this guy, a, a musician? A pianist, probably retired or worse. What's his name? Eric. Eric Levonicek. You're looking for Lujak's father? Here we go. Thank you. Oh, sure. Mm, enjoy. Thanks, Sam. All right. have an opinion to spare, but as only if you help me with this map of Springfield, I've got to uh, pinpoint some of these hotels that this Witherall lady may have stayed at. You really think she stayed here in town? Never overlook the obvious. Sometimes the story is right under your nose. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. Do I get one too? you didn't make a call from my place to Boston sometime last spring. I'm positive. I don't know what's going on then. According to the phone record, somebody placed a call from my place to Gene Weather. What? Isn't it going to be fun when the press gets hold of that? Uncle Ross? Sammy. I have to talk to you. You know something about this case. Ross, we found Gene Weather's motel room. Now, as soon as we get her personal effects, we can find out who brought her to Springfield and why she died. family, so you will stand at the head of the table like so, fill up each glass, and then That's when they so ask... When I will explain to Maria. Okay? If you should run out of anything, or if you need anything, you just ask my nephew here. Hello, Frank. Hello, Maria. How are you? <laughs> did he talk you into this? How did he do that? <laughs> Fly Fox. Uh, yes. Pay hey, no mind to Stavros, all right? You know the real reason you're here to work tonight, right? I take care of the older men, so you can sit and enjoy the evening with uh, Frank. Bravo, Maria. <laughs> So, um, what I want you to do is to put a Greek flag, an American flag. Why do you want to find Eric Levonichek? Well, I lived with the man for many years. I thought it might be nice to talk over all the time. Wait, I don't understand this. You said how horrible this man treated you. Why would you want to put yourself through that again? We all remember things differently. I'd like to hear Eric's version of things. The man deserted you. He kidnapped your child. Yes. Eric did kidnap Lutek. A lot went on behind my back in Paris, and Eric has the answers to so many questions, and I have so many questions to ask. You have not seen him in years. Decades. I thought he was dead. Well, it was never confirmed. Look, a man like that, he's going to say whatever it is you want to hear as long as he thinks that there's something in it for him. All right? I would hardly call that a reliable source. Well, he's all I have right now. Uh, 
Hello, Alexandra. I'm glad you're here. I need to, t to talk to you privately for a moment. What's it about? Uh, it's about the Hopkins contract. I got it. Excellent. You really have the Midas touch these days. <laughs> Sit down, both of you. Uh, well, I think it would be better if oh, we Oh, just... nonsense. We all work together. Perhaps my nephew can learn something from your handling of the deal. Yes, I'd be very interested in how you pulled it off. That's the spirit. Do you have the contracts? Oh, yes, I do. Um, it's not exactly what I had hoped. Oh, don't be modest. I'm sure it's... Have you lost your mind? <laughs> hello, hello, I am. I want your best table now, because we had a victory celebration going here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, it sounds like you just pulled off another big one, huh? No, no, actually, I lost it. But that's the best part. <laughs> okay. Hey, whatever you say, man. Look, Billy, I, um, I've got something I want to talk to you about. It's, it's kind of important. Billy, isn't that uh, Clint Hopkins out there? It sure is. I want to introduce you to him. You are saying? No, no, no. Whenever you get a minute, okay? You got it. Great. Come on. Take it easy. See you. <laughs> Lynn, good to see you again. Uh, I don't know if you're going to think that or not, man. I had to go for Vanessa's higher bid. Ah, uh, well, there's no problem with me. No hard feelings, isn't it? No, no, no. She um, beat me fair and square. What can I say? It's just one deal. I don't want to burn this bridge, either. I'd like you to meet my wife, Nadine. Hi, Hi how pleasure. are you? My pleasure. Well, what about this one? Too far out. Hmm. All right. Well, this one's closer. Definitely has potential. Good. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wait, which one? Right here. It's perfect. It's tasteful, but elegant. Not too flashy. Well, how can you tell all this about a hotel just by looking at a map? <laughs> you are the only man in my life, Roger, is another species. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can joke about it. Well, I can because I feel secure and I'm happy. Yeah, because sure, of you. I know. I know that and you know that, but I think Roger is getting the wrong message. What you're talking about. The rides, the late evening meetings, and, and, and the way he was with you in the cafeteria. He wasn't any way with me when we were just talking. Holly, I know when a man is coming on to you, he's getting comfortable. He's getting too comfortable. What was this at the bar about? I want to kiss. It was just a joke. Maybe. Look, we came over here together because we were both going in the same direction. We were talking at the studio. We had some discussion, a business discussion. And uh, so we got in the car to, to finish it so I could get here quicker to be with you. Whose idea was this business discussion? I don't know. Roger's, I guess. Ah, uh, I guarantee it. I think it's time that we make a statement as to where you stand. Roger knows exactly where I stand, and I don't want to discuss it I any further with him. I was thinking more along the lines of telling the whole world something permanent. Sounds serious. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thorpe here. We're in trouble. Mallet just came in. He found Gene's hotel room. He's waiting for a search warrant. Did you get the address? For us, all they want is a lousy search warrant. It, look, it took less time to write the Constitution. Judge Collier's left for the day. Great, just great. Where do you think you're going? If someone beats us to the motel room, a search warrant won't do us any good. So if you find something without a search warrant, it's worthless. Now listen to me, we're going to do this by, by the book. book. Yeah, yeah, you got to get yourself a new mantra. Look, I just want to go by and look around. It's not... Oh, no, just sit down and wait until they find Collier. It's not going to take that long. Yeah, well, if that motel clerk came to us before his shift was over. Look, it's understandable. He wanted to wait, come in, collect the reward. Yeah, model citizen. Look, Mallet, if this pans out, I'll run his photograph up a flagpole if he wants. Now, what about this uh, man that Gene was with? Oh, yeah, well, the clerk says it was a boyfriend. A what? I know, I know, it doesn't fit. We're going to have him come in tomorrow, look at photos, and see if he can ID the guy. Can we talk? Oh, yes, uh, Sammy. Uh, look, Mal, I'm going to take Samantha to dinner. Oh, the minute you get that warrant, you call me at the Blue Moon. Go ahead, there's nothing else you can do here. Don't you dare go near that motel it's without a warrant. Scouts on it, Russ. It's just not worth it. By the book. You got you keeping an eye on me? Yeah, well, he did ask me to call if you left. That figures. So, 
How do you like working for him? For Ross? He's okay in my book. He's the most honest guy I know. And believe me, you want to work for someone you trust. You're right. Well, I know it looks a bit rich on paper. There's a way to make it sound better. Yeah, it's, it's an important acquisition. I think it will pay off for the company in time. What possessed you to make such an astronomical bid? Well, Hopkins is an important contract, a desirable one, and... And we stand to make important gains in I'd the like field. to see these gains in my lifetime. Or Alan Michaels. Whom were you bidding against? Oh, that's not relevant. I think we should uh, concentrate on the positive aspects of the deal. I can't for the life of me figure out what was going on in your mind. You know, market trends don't justify these numbers. Maybe it's best if we know who we're dealing with. I mean, maybe they know something that we don't. Well, Lewis Oil. Billy Lewis. Yes. So you got into a bidding war with your ex-husband and squashed him with spalling money. No, I have my own money invested in this. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. I, I can only promise that it will never, ever happen again. It certainly won't. I want to be informed personally. Anytime Lewis Oil is involved in our bidding or anything else, of course. Vanessa, I... I don't care about the details of your personal life. But when you deal at the expense of the company... I know. You were right. I understand. Excuse me, there's something that I need to take care of. Well, it looks like Vanessa's experience with Lewis Oil has become more of a liability than an asset. Alexandra Spaulding. Yes. When? Well, where are you now? Do you have someone else on it? No, no, never mind. Who was that? Oh, the man who was tailing Eric in Paris. He got chicken pox. Chicken pox, for heaven's sake. Just when he was really on to something. I have to get someone else over there, right away. You know, I know just the guy. To track down Eric? Mm-hmm. Well, who is this person? Here, here, I have this uh, yeah, Oh, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Sorry, Gustavus. Hey, you might be distracted this evening, aren't you, Forty? Yeah, well, um... Yeah, um, anyway, hey, listen, don't be lifting any of these boxes, they're heavy. No, no, All right. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Eleni, I want to thank you for giving up your night to help with my men's club. Oh, I don't mind, Stavros. And it gives me the chance to show Frankie what a good Greek wife does to entertain her husband's friends. Oh, I like to hear this. And I promise you that as soon as the clock strikes 11, we will disappear like uh, Cinderella's mice <laughs> and leave the wonderful part of the evening for you and your man. Mm. Hello, Frank Cooper. Frank, it's Alexandra Spaulding. Miss Spaulding? I need your detecting skills. It's a very important job, and I'll pay you an obscene amount of money. Can you come by right away? Uh, yeah, could you hold on a second, please? But what, what is it? It's, uh, it's Alexander Spaulding. She says she has some detective work for me, but she needs me over there right away. Well, will she pay you? Yeah, she says she pays a lot of money. But the problem is, is that, um... I don't want to leave you. Oh, Frankie, no, it's okay. This, this is important. This is good for you. You know, you just hurry back. All right, then I will save you some wine, and... Some dessert. Thank you. Good. Um, yes, hi, I'm sorry. Um, listen, where are you? At the office. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll be right there. Thanks. Are you, are you sure about this? Yes, come on, go, go, go. It's good. Okay, thanks. All right, hurry back. All right. Buddy, where are you going? Uh, I gotta call the stop. Eleni, how can you let him walk out like this on such an important night? Oh, Stavros, I know he'll be back before anything starts, and I just know he will. Hmm? Thank you. That was a fine idea. Oh, Frank will be perfect. 
sounded just perfect. So your secretary said come right on in. Yes, so. of course, please, sit down. Uh, actually, I'd rather stand, thank you. Well, thank you for being prompt. I need you to find a man named Eric Lovonicek. He's probably somewhere in Europe. Oh, you want me to tag along with Alan Michael? No, you'd be going alone, but Alan Michael did recommend you for the job. Well, that's nice. Thanks, Alan Michael. You'll start in Paris. <laughs> you want to tell me why? He's my son's father. There are some questions I need to ask him. Well, um, actually, I mean, uh, why did you choose me? I mean, there are other people. But there's no time to waste. Look, Frank, an issue here is a matter of trust. I know you, and I think we can count on you. Yes, and my first investigator's out of commission. He's on family retainer. Uh, was he hot on the trail? Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. Okay, um, this uh, Mr. Um, Lovonicek. Lovonicek. Yeah. Eric Lovonicek. Okay, when was he last seen? Well, this is the most recent report I received from Paris, and the investigator had a most promising lead. There's the address. Okay, you, uh, you got a picture on this guy? No. I haven't seen Eric for, uh, well, it's uh, been more than 25 years, sir. I can get you some old uh, record jackets with his photo on them. He was a musician? Yeah, uh, he's a pianist. Well, he was. Uh, as I said, it was a long time ago. I, uh, I have no idea what he looks like now or what he's doing. Um, listen, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you should have somebody else do this. Hi, Mrs. 
Mr. Lewis. Hey, how you doing? Uh, look, I'm going to let you two get back to eating. It was, it was good to see you. You too, Danny. I just got a tip from Fletcher's source over at police headquarters. I found out where that lady was staying. You're kidding. Nope. And if I hurry up, I can get there before the police soon get ten minutes in there. Well, isn't that illegal? Only if you get caught. Look, I'll be back before the main course, all right? Nick, wait, I'm coming with you. Are you kidding me? It's out of the question. Nick! Hey, it's no big deal, all right? You just sit tight, I'll be back before you know. <laughs> Uh, breakfast on Wednesday. You got it, man. I'm buying, okay? You better be. <laughs> I really am a good loser, aren't I? Yes, you are, honey, but I still wish you'd gotten that contract, even if you did make Vanessa look bad. You know, losing is definitely winning in this case. I mean, <laughs> Spalding painted through the nose on this thing is going to definitely keep him out of my ball field. And you know, they're going to think twice before they mess with Billy Lewis. And it doesn't have nothing to do with Vanessa. <laughs> oh, honey, I love it when you get on a roll like this. It makes you even more happy. <laughs> hey, Ham. Yeah. What did you want to talk to me about? Oh, look, man, after you finish eating, um, it's just kind of involved. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I have to go powder my nose. <laughs> 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 she got you bad, man. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't know what your situation is right now, so you tell me if, um, if I'm way off base. But I think you're going to be the best bet to help me pull this off the way I need him. him. But I'm your best friend. Just spit it out. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Fletcher is leaving. I don't want to buy him out. So I need a loan. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Marlowe. Hi. Table for two? Yes, please, Carter. Good. Well, it'll be just a minute. All right. Sammy, you know something about the weather roll case, don't you? Yeah. Let's go talk out on the deck, okay? Why? It's more private. I know who spoke to her on the phone from your house this spring. It was me. After I'm working on another project, and it's right here in town. Frank, would a Spalding paycheck help out with this uh, other project? Well, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Well, there you go. As a matter of fact, when you get back, you'll have more work waiting for you. Yes. We're always in need of a good investigator. Listen. Frank, you could, you know, you can get out of that diner once and for all. I mean, how long can you operate out of that, that little booth there? You know, you got to think about your future. I am. I just want to see you make a go of it. This should get you off to a good start, Frank. Well, um, <laughs> hold on one second here. I mean, I, I haven't agreed to anything You'll here. get this up front and the same amount when the job is done. Yeah, look, Frank, my aunt is in a hurry. I know you would do a good job. It's just that, um, well, you're going to have to leave tonight. <laughs> tonight? Right yeah. away. Look, if you can't commit to this thing, then I'm going to have to get somebody else. Well, wait, hold on here. Now. I mean, it, it's after 8, and I haven't packed, and, uh, Frank, I, don't worry about it. Look, you're not going to miss any plane. It's ours. It's the Spalding Jet. Yes, and I'll throw in another few thousand. You can buy clothes, whatever you need, when you get to Paris. You, uh, you make it hard to say no. Oh, that's the idea, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I, I need to make a phone call. Can I Close, phone? help yourself. Yeah, thank you. What's in this for you? I like the guy. Uh, I mean, I do owe that family. Oh, man. Uh, the line was busy. Uh, Alan Michael, can I ask you a favor? Sure. Listen, I'm supposed to throw this party for Uncle Stavros tonight and all that with Elaine, and afterward we were supposed to have, like, a, I don't know, a little special time together. Would you please explain to her why I can't make it? Absolutely, no problem. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you. This is everything I have, and I'll fax you the record jacket photos of Eric. Yeah, listen, Frank, uh, the car's waiting downstairs. I'll call and let them know that you're on your way. They'll take you straight to the airport. Okay. Good luck, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good trip, man. Thanks, Alan. Joan, here's the warrant. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Great. Call Ross. Tell him we're on our way. Got it.
Yeah, could you, uh, could you page Ross Marler for me, please? There's no one else here. Well, where's your boss? This is the Blue Moon. Mallet just went. He's on uh, his way to Gene's hotel room. We got a warrant. No problem. Why didn't you leave those to feed Daniel to the cops? Well, so Gene comes off like a nutcase and Daniel walks away again like he did in Boston? No, I'm going to pick the time where these will do the most damage. Don't worry. You're in the clear. There's nothing left to connect us to Gene. You sure? Absolutely. And it's finally over. Mm -hmm. Now, with any luck, Holly will never know I'm involved. And I can go on working for Ross now. And me. I'd have to insist. Draw. We've won a battle, but there's still a long way to go. Not for me. Look, your plan didn't work, Roger. People are starting to ask a lot of questions. I, I think it might be best if you just didn't call me anymore. I'm sorry you feel that way. You've been doing so well. Yeah, well, we've been lucky so far. Oh, that, come on, that's nothing. It keeps life interesting. I'll tell you what. Why don't we take the night off? And I'll show you my deepest appreciation. Why don't we just quit while we're ahead? That's not the way the agency trained you. Yeah, well, maybe that's why I never got out of clerking. Maybe they were right. I'm better suited to civilian life. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's not your decision to make. Nope. Nobody leaves until this job is over. And I get to decide when that is. Okay? Now, we either hang together, or you, my dear, hang alone. set up something at about five and a half percent okay i mean i got a payment schedule okay okay six percent but i got a payment schedule that can, this is the way we'll do it i'll put up half of my ownership in the restaurant as collateral okay and we'll pay you 30 percent from the net receipts whoa, whoa, until we wait, pay the whoa, whoa. what man? why don't i just write you a check and you pay me back when you can oh come on no no how much you need Look, look, Billy, it's too much, and I really need to set up a serious program myself, okay? So I need a contract yeah, to do it right. Yeah, you're going to pay me back, right? Yeah, of course I'm going to pay That's you back. That's a good enough contract for me. <laughs> Billy, look, money can make things get weird between friends, and I've seen it happen too many times, and I love you too much for that to happen with us, you know? Okay, so, all right, tell you what I'll do. You write up whatever it is you think you need to write up, I'll look at it, and then you name a hamburger after me. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, come on, man, look up. <laughs> Billy Black Jack. Sit up. We've done nothing. Don't... <laughs> Man, hey, but it's okay. Okay. All right, okay. I'll shut up. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Um, you got the best guy in the world. Right here. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hmm. He is right, you know. Nobody can hold a candle to you. You are my king among men. Uh, is, uh, is Fletcher here tonight? No, 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 I'm afraid he isn't, but, um, you may not find this the friendliest crowd tonight. I went to see Ms. Weatherill in Boston the day after I talked to her on the phone. He told me you are going to see a girlfriend from college. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sammy, you knew Jean before all of this happened? No. Well, then what's going on? What prompted all of this? I was trying to help a friend. Jean's sister died in a car accident, okay? She, the, my friend blamed himself for this, even though it wasn't his fault. It was eating him away, keeping him from... From what, Sammy? I thought that if Jean could talk to him, if she could forgive him, that... See, he had trouble getting close to people, okay? Because this thing was in the way. All right, all right. Why was all of this so important to you? Because I loved him. And I thought that he could love me, too. Oh, Sammy. And then it 
all backfired. Jean never stopped blaming him for her sister's death. She came to Springfield to ruin him, and then she went on that TV show. Yeah, she was going to name him. Did you know about this all along? Yes. It's my fault she came to Springfield, and it's my fault that she hounded him that all that time, and she's dead, and it's all my fault. Well, I don't want to see me. You just tried to help somebody. Who was it, Sam? Daniel. Daniel St. John. 59. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I was just uh, passing the time until, uh, well, Frankie would call or something. Oh, yeah, Frank. Yeah, he, he went to go see your aunt, uh, Alexandra, Alexandra. Yeah, yes. I know, about some big job. Did you, did you see him? I mean, did he get the job? Yeah, he's, uh, he's already gone. <laughs> gone where? To Europe, Paris. You're, you're joking. No, no, he's, he takes the smalling jet. He's long gone by now. He said something about, uh, oh, it being a really exorbitant amount of money and, and him missing, uh, uh, what's, what's going on around here? Uh, Stavros. Uh, right, right, right. He, he said he was missing that, um, that I should tell Stavros. Was well, that all he said? Well, except that he couldn't make it. Why? Were you expecting something else? No. Oh, nothing. What are you, nuts? What if I was the cops? Then you wouldn't be caught already, which is why I'm here. That doesn't make any sense. You're not staying here. Yes, I am. So just hurry up and I'll watch the window. And don't waste time arguing because I'll end up getting my way. Oh, brother. Why would you pull a stupid stunt like this? Because I never know what to wear to visit someone in jail. Hey. Don't worry, they drove past. So, what are we looking for? You're looking out the window. I'll know what I'm looking for when I find it. Why did you do that? Sometimes people use notes as a bookmark. Sometimes they throw things inside of books without thinking about it. Do you really expect to find anything in there? Never overlook the obvious, especially with this woman. She wasn't a crook. She was just a suburban housewife who was probably scared out of her mind. What are you doing? Just admiring the view. So did you go through her lingerie? I was just about to do that. You know, women used to hide things there, counting on the fact that men would be too gentlemanly to go through. How have we stooped so low? So where do women hide things nowadays? In their shoes. Men hate women's shoes. Unbelievable. Did I tell you? It's frightening. What did you find? An address book. Looks like somebody helped himself to a few pages. No, no, don't touch. I get the feeling someone was here before we were. I hear what you're saying, but uh, I thought we were ready for this, this next step. It's a big step. Um, so much is up in the air. My job came through. You're all set at it's the station. It's not about you. It's Blake and... I feel like I'm carrying around so much baggage, you know. These are all things that we should be able to work through together. If you love me. You know how I feel, Beth. I'm sorry I'm not doing this very well. I just... I just... Uh, I suddenly... I, I feel so unsettled, and, and that's not fair to you. Take the diary I gave you and you use it to sort out your thoughts. Um, like you did before, it helped, didn't it? Yeah. So maybe if you write this all down, 
Take your time, and after a while, we'll see what you really want. Now, did Daniel know that you went to see Jean Weatherly? Not at first. He never even told me her name. Well, then how did you find out about her? Before I went into surgery, I was more scared than I'd ever been, and Daniel told me about this time that he was paralyzed. Not physically, but... Yeah, emotionally, because Jean's sister had been killed in the car accident. <laughs> Sam, I just think that he was trying to get you in the proper frame of mind with surgery. No, it was more than that. It was. I could see that this accident had him all tied up inside. And you thought that if you could help him get over this, he would respond to you? So I went to Jean and I started this whole thing. She was bitter and vindictive. How'd you find out her name, Sam? A newspaper article. I went through some of Daniel's things. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? I wanted to. I, but I made enough trouble for Daniel as it, as it was. And I didn't want the whole story to come out. He had his new job. In Holland? Yes. And you wanted to help? Yes. So I, I went to look for Jean so that Daniel could talk to her. But actually, that was his idea. Oh, wait a minute. I thought you said you wanted to. I did at first. I, fe I felt so guilty, but he started using me. He, and then he lied to me. He said he had this diary that he wanted to show to Jean that it was her sister's, and he, it, would, it would all come out. It would prove his innocence. And then I saw it, and it was blank, and then it scared me because I knew that he'd been lying the whole time. Okay, now, Sammy, just take it easy. I tried to, to give him reasonable doubt, okay? I tried, but now I know. He was desperate to stop Jean at any cost. All right. It's going to be okay. We'll take care of this. Who is it? Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Well, this is a nice surprise. Good. I, I was hoping that I could make it even nicer. I... Would you mind if I came in for a nightcap? No, not at all. You know, you were incredible today, you know, dealing with Billy, and that's a guy that hates to lose, and you just... <laughs> I hate to lose. Don't. Uh, Maria, it looks like you're not going to be working alone anymore uh, tonight. But I thought that you and Frankie were... Uh... Uh, yeah, well, Mr. Big Shot is just too busy to do these kinds of things. It's the way he treats you. And now you'll be all alone at the party tonight? Uh, what else is new, Maria, huh? I'll go check the bathroom again. All right, but hurry up. Springfield area cup. Sammy, what do you think I should do? I think that you should investigate Daniel for murder. From what I've learned, you go after the person who has the most to gain by a crime. Yes, and you think that person is Dan? Well, Gene was intent on destroying his this perfect little life that he made for himself. You think you were jealous of that perfect life? Probably I was, but that doesn't change what I told you. No, I guess it doesn't. Sammy, from now on, you stay away from Danny St. John. Thank you. For what? For being understanding. Hey, you take all the time you need. I don't want this to be right for you. I'll wait. Of course, I have to know what I'm waiting for.
Ultra Naturals Leather Gloves by Founds. Fido Dido Sportswear by Eltra. Be sure to be with us Monday for another full hour of Guiding Light.